So on XRP, and I got some some trend lines here and stuff from, from previous analysis, but basically what we have is a breakout. So you can see the trend line here and the trend line down here created a wedge pattern. Very clearly, we broke out. We've now then been putting in bullish consolidation mm -hmm. again. As long as you stay within these two lines here, this is a bullish chart that should break up. If we start to get below here, then be careful. It could fail and could come down. So on Tuesday, the overall crypto market cap made significant gains, rising to a monthly high of $995 billion, according to data from CoinMarketCap. Bitcoin rose by over 7% to $20,700, while Ether gained around 14%, rising to a record high of $1,533, its highest price since September 15. The latest bear market rally in the crypto market coincides with the dollar falling to a three-week low. It also aligns with Gareth Soloway's previous prediction that we might get a massive Bitcoin rally to the north of $25,000 before a major downside move that could send the world's largest cryptocurrency to $13,000 or below. The popular technical analyst, who is also the president and chief market strategist of InTheMoneyStocks.com, previously predicted that a slight pivot in the Federal Reserve's hawkish stance could spur a massive rally in the cryptocurrency market before the first quarter of 2023. With the dollar showing signs of weakness, we might be heading into the much-needed bear market rally. In a recent interview, Soloway discusses the possibility of a Fed pivot and the impact it could have on Bitcoin and other asset prices. He also gives a price update on some top altcoins, including Cardano and XRP. Before we take you to Soloway's important update on these crypto assets, Please take a little time to like this video, subscribe, and turn on post notifications if you are yet to do so. Also, ensure you drop your comments and observations in the comments section below. Thanks, and enjoy the video. The Fed is really printing money than you would think that they would. But my guess is the Fed isn't going to go back to printing money. Instead, what they're going to do is they're going to do it very, very slowly because inflation is still elevated, maybe not 8%. But if you're talking like a 4% number or 3% number, the Fed's not going to want to print a ton of money, right? They're not going to go right to quantitative easing because then you're going to see inflation go to 20%. So what the Fed will end up doing is they'll lower rates, but they're not going to go right back to that printing. And I think that's the kicker is that the economic dire straits will keep pressure on stocks because the Fed's not acting aggressively enough. But gold will start to see that safe haven asset where you don't want to be in stocks because they're not going up. But at the same time, the dollar's not going up anymore. You know, things are not really performing like they should. So gold is the ultimate recipient. Yeah. So I, I think that is also going to be likely where crypto makes a bottom, right? So if we go to the Bitcoin chart here, and again, this is now looking at a really long view of crypto, but I do think there's still downside to go in crypto. And you can see the bear flag on the monthly chart. So midterm, I still think you have downside to 12, 13,000, maybe sub. But I do think when the Fed really gets in that tight spot and you see rates begin to come down, and the Fed pivoting and potentially things getting bad enough in the in the economy, both globally and domestically, that's where Bitcoin could actually put in a bottom and start performing along with gold. And, and I really do believe that we're now in a protracted, like a long term sideways chop period. And I think I don't know if we talked about this last time, but it's a great in terms of looking at the macro, it's it makes a lot of sense. But look at like the Brazilian stock market, right? So if you look at what does this look like, Paul, see this run up from 2002 to 2008, mm -hmm. look at that run in the, the Brazilian stock market and then compare it to what we just looked at on the monthly S&P chart. Look at this yeah. bull run here, right? It's very identical. And then what scares me about the U.S. equity markets, and listen, I'm a trader, so it doesn't really matter, but you have to look at what has it done since the 2008 high and look at this. So you have not made a new high, not even close on the Brazilian stock market since 2008. And now here we are 14 years later. And you could also say the same thing for the Hang Seng market, where, you know, it's another good comparison to what period we could be coming into. This is the monthly Hang Seng chart. So you could see back in 08, 07, you were up here and all you've done is go sideways with some big dips in there. And I do worry that that's the future. We're looking at a future chart of the S&P 500 here. With the absence of money printing, Soloway is predicting that the U.S. stock market could last for four to five years. This would cause a frantic search for profitable ventures among investors worldwide. It is certain that some of the money that comes out of the equities market will go to Bitcoin and other top cryptocurrencies. Could we finally see a decoupling between Bitcoin and the stock market? 
Please let us know what you think in the comments section below as Soloway gives a price update on some top altcoins. So let's take a look. Let's take a look at Cardano here. So this is the weekly Cardano chart. So this isn't going to tell us what it's going to do in the next couple of days. Oh. The weekly Cardano chart continues to be a concern. And I'll, I'll show you why here. And again, I like Cardano, but you yeah. the chart is the chart, right? The chart yeah. is my master, essentially. And it bothers me a little bit. You can see this support here, pivot, pivot, and right through here. And look, we're starting to peak below that trend line. And so that's a concern. If it doesn't get above soon... Cardano could have another leg lower. You no, could be looking at 30 cents on Cardano in the not too distant future. Okay, let's take a look at XRP here, right? So on XRP, and I got some some trend lines here and stuff from, from previous analysis, but basically what we have is a breakout. So you could see the trend line here and the trend line down here created a wedge pattern. Very clearly we broke out. We've now then been putting in bullish consolidation mm -hmm. again. As long as you stay within these two lines here, this is a bullish chart that should break up. If we start to get below here, then be careful. It could fail and could come down. So I would say, again, a little bit on the trickier side, but at least as of now, midterm would be bullish on XRP. I'm a big fan of getting some, some rules down on paper, but in terms of this specific case, I don't have much of a guidance. I don't have a lot of research that I've done on what's going on, the inner workings of it. But I, I think the bottom line is, as an investor, I stay away from Ripple just because I don't know the outcome. Anytime I can't quantify or if I don't feel like I have an edge in a trade, then I stay away from it. All right. So again, I think that's the key right now is just, do you have insight into the 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 analysis or if not, stay away from it. I want to show you guys some cool technicals on quant, right? So basically, when you look at the quant chart here, you had this beautiful inverse head and shoulders, right? Shoulder, head, and shoulder. And I'm going to show you a tactic that you can use to calculate the target of a breakout. How high will a inverse head and shoulder go? And I'm going to show you this. This is pretty remarkable stuff. So let's first start by drawing the head and the, the inverse head and shoulder. So shoulder, head, and shoulder right here, right? So there's our there's our inverse head and shoulders, clear as day. Let's put the neckline in. Now, the way you calculate a target is very simple. What you do is you take the lowest point of the head and a vertical line to the, the neckline. This is called the neckline here. You take that distance, and when you break out, that distance should be how high you go on quant. Well, let's do a test of that. The low here was around $40. The line when you draw a vertical was around $140. So now you have a $100 move to this line, which means when you broke out here, you should go $100 higher. Well, the breakout occurred at $125, which means at $225 was your target. Mm. Look at that. Look at that. Right to the target and look at the pullback. So it's just some cool stuff how we figure this stuff out in technicals. And you can see, again, for me, I'm I'm not looking to buy this now because I number one I wish I saw this before I would have shorted it there but on a pullback where would I be a buyer I would look, look for funny. a retrace to that line and then buy that line if you could get a retrace to that line high probability long opportunity on quant with the latest crypto market rally we are seeing some pretty impressive moves in the top cryptocurrencies Ether Dogecoin Cardano and Polkadot are currently leading the pack in gains over the past 24 hours. The top altcoin has over 14% in the past 24 hours and 17% within the past week. The top meme coin has gained over 14% in 24 hours and around 16% over the past week. Cardano comes next after gaining around 13% in the past 24 hours and 13.58% within the past week. Lastly, Polkadot has increased by 10.78% and 7.71 in 24 hours and 7 days respectively. Do you think the rally will be sustained until the Fed announces the next rate hike in November? Let us know your thoughts on the ongoing rally and Gareth Soloway's interview in the comments section below. Also, be sure you hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and turn on post notifications for more videos like this. Thanks for watching.